Welcome everyone. Today we'd like to talk to you about Microsoft Mesh. It's a platform that enables organizations to build custom, shared, immersive experiences. Mesh offers hybrid workers a way to truly connect from anywhere, with a sense of co-presence and natural ways to interact in three-dimensional immersive experiences. Today, we're going to show you how you can create your own immersive experiences in Mesh. And if you like what you see, we'll share a link so you can register interest for private preview. Hi, I'm Brent Jackson. And I'm Mega Sharma. We're product managers for Microsoft Mesh and excited to be here today to tell you all about it. We're already seeing our early adopter customers unlocking the power of Mesh by creating custom immersive solutions tailored to their organization's needs that go beyond the limitations of the physical world. Whether you're on a PC or a VR headset, Mesh offers a seamless and immersive experience that transcends physical boundaries and allows you to connect with others like never before. Mega, why don't you share some experience scenarios we've seen partners creating for Mesh? Sure. Some examples of these enriching immersive experiences include corporate events such as All Hands, where you can have one-to-many events with immersive storytelling and connect people from different places around the world. With Mesh, you can unlock a deeper engagement between the presenter and participants with a stronger connection between peers. Another example is interactive learning and simulations, where Mesh can be used to facilitate guided and self-guided experiences. You can also create immersive simulations for specialized training that can connect new people through shared learning experiences. Having fun together is a vital ingredient in successful relationship building and something that's often missed in remote work. With Mesh, you can have social gatherings and interactive spaces that are designed to bring people together. I worked remotely when I first started working at Microsoft, and I really did feel a deeper sense of connection when interacting with colleagues in fun 3D environments like a beach cabana, as you can see in this video. I found such experiences invaluable in combating the isolation and lack of physical presence associated with remote work. You can build experiences like these when you're confirmed as part of the private preview program. Now, you might be wondering how to build these experiences. You'll see possibilities are endless as we dive into Mesh's capabilities. Brent, why don't you tell us more? Yeah, of course. You can build scenarios like these for Mesh by using a collection of tools we provide for you for use with Unity. Now, I do want to point out that these tools are designed for creators who have a familiarity with Unity, C Sharp, and either technical art skills or a way to procure whatever technical art your experience may need. If you don't have these capabilities or access to people who do, there are plenty of third parties out there that can help you skill up so that you will be ready to start creating for Mesh. Anyway, the tools provided will enable you to create custom experiences users can explore with their avatars. You can include things like physics-enabled game objects that can manipulate together and interactive web content. Plus, with Mesh's cloud scripting, you can leverage the full power of C-sharp and .NET Core to connect things like your business logic to your Mesh experiences. We'll show you what this looks like in Unity in just a minute, but I mentioned exploring with our avatars a second ago. You see, there's a lot of stuff in Mesh that just works that you don't have to worry about when you're creating for Mesh. Mega, why don't you cover these Mesh features? Sure thing. Microsoft Mesh offers a range of impressive features designed to enhance your immersive experiences, including the ability to host up to 1,000 users at a time, distributed across different shards of the same environment. Our production tools ensure that your presenters are seen and heard clearly. Other features include our fun, customizable avatar system, input system, and spatial audio. You also only need to design, build, and publish your environment once for PC and VR, making it easy to interact synchronously with the mouse and your keyboard on PC and have a fully immersive VR experience. Finally, we provide robust privacy, security, and identity management features through Microsoft 365, so you can trust that your information is safe. So now that you've covered everything you get when you build with Mesh, tell us about the one-on-one tutorial that you will guide users through how to leverage these capabilities. I'd love to. Like all things in life that have a one-on-one tutorial, we recommend that you begin there to start building with best practices, and then you can mesh around all you want. Mesh 101 is an interactive tutorial designed to guide creators with experience in Unity through some of the basics. These will be some of the most commonly used building blocks across all the Mesh experiences we discussed earlier, such as all hands and social gatherings. This tutorial will give you confidence to create engaging experiences for Mesh using Unity. 
One of the things I love about this tutorial is it also serves as a learning scenario. In this example, a company is educating its users on wind turbines via interactive stations in mesh. But you can imagine other enterprises could do something similar to teach their audience about other relevant topics applicable to their industry. It doesn't have to be wind turbines, it can be anything they want to teach. What we give you when you get started with Mesh in Private Preview to create this experience is documentation providing a detailed tutorial walkthrough of these building blocks, tools for building your environment, and a pre-made URP scene. These tools come with buttons, and it'll be your job to learn how to turn the scene into a Mesh experience. Brent, why don't we demo how to get started building for Mesh? Yeah, let's take a look. So what you see here is a scene and some of our tools set up for use in Unity. The first thing we need to do is make sure our avatars can explore the area we want them to. Now we do this by adding a nav mesh layer and a teleporter tag to these spots where we want our users to keep their focus. Next, we make sure the scale is right. Since mesh is experienced at a one-to-one -one scale, we need to size our environment accordingly. One thing that can help here is that when you add the play mode prefab by left-clicking in the hierarchy and navigating to play mode setup, you get our little dev art person who's about average height, so you can use them as a reference to get a sense if your experience as a person scale. So what if I find a cool article on wind farms on the web? Can I add that in here for participants to see? You can. We just add in a web view. I go to the same place I found play mode setup and add a web view and position it in the scene where I want it. Now, if you look in the inspector, you can see it defaults to Microsoft.com. Just paste the site you want to go to here and your web view is ready to go. Once you have your scene set up, enter play mode, get a feel for your interactions and some basic mouse and keyboard locomotion and see if there is anything you may want to change. I'll note here that by default, you will spawn into your scene at the origin point and this environment was designed with that in mind. But you can change this using our spawn point configurator if you want your users to spawn somewhere specific. This can be helpful if you are porting pre-existing content into Mesh that wasn't designed this way. You can see now that we are in play mode. We can move around our scene and interact with the web view. Play mode provides this quick dev loop we think you'll appreciate. Something else that's helpful with porting experiences to Mesh is our content performance analyzer tool. With the click of a button, I can get an analysis of my scene and understand where I may be going over budget with my polygon counts, or where my textures may be too high res, or a myriad of other things that all need to be in balance in order to create a performant experience. We can see now that there are a couple of areas that have failed. Obviously that doesn't mean your scene won't work as you just saw in play mode. What it really just means is that there's an area that we generally think you are spending a decent chunk of your performance budget and we point out what those things are when they are over our suggested values. Let's check out the collision complexity. This one says that our mesh collider has a high poly count, which is true. This is a good insight. We may choose to leave this as by design or consider gaining some perf back by changing from mesh colliders to capsule colliders. This part really is an art form. There's no right answer on how to balance your perf budget, but performance is key to creating environments that feel truly immersive where users can really connect naturally with each other. We hope these guiding references will help you make the best experiences you can. Okay, I'll hand things off to you now. Let's take a look at the building blocks in this tutorial, including configuring mixed reality design language buttons and adding basic interactivity to a scene using physics. First, we use a simple button to introduce scripting. As mentioned earlier, you can do amazing things with scripting, like connecting live backend data, accessing the full power of C-sharp and .NET Core, using enterprise data, and also making these simple buttons. <laughs> you can configure these buttons so participants can play a video, trigger information based on avatar proximity, and teleport within the scene. I'll show you how to configure a teleport button to teleport your users anywhere, including the top of a wind turbine, a place where most people wouldn't usually get to go. Can you imagine taking your whole team there? We can. We already have a teleport button working in the scene, but I'll demo how to make one work for Mesh. First, I'll drag both the backplate and button prefabs into the scene and place them under this Chapter 3 parent game object. I'm doing that because Chapter 3 contains our Mesh app, and because the buttons rely on Mesh scripting, we need these buttons to be a child of the Mesh app. I'm positioning these buttons where we want them, 
And what I'll do is change the label to say teleport. I'll call this button teleport to wind turbine so we can identify it in VS code later. No confusion. Next, I'll add an empty game object that specifies where in the world we want to teleport to. I'll call it teleport location wind turbine. I'll turn my Z axis to the turbine because that specifies what direction my user is facing after teleporting. Now that's it for our work in Unity. I've added a button to our scene, given it a name, and I've set a location I can teleport to. Next, let's jump into our Visual Studio project, which I already have open. All the logic for this whole wind turbine scene lives in these functions. I have some code here, and looking at the code, we find the button, subscribe to the clicked event, look for the location of the top of the turbine, aka transform node, and if we find it, we grab the avatar that clicked on this button and teleport them to the specified position and orientation. So let's jump back to Unity and see if this all worked. I'm going to go into play mode now, and I'm going to wait for assemblies to reload and cloud apps to build and attach. All right, it worked. We're teleported all the way up here. I can click the Show Generator button and stick my head in and look around. And we already have a button up here to teleport right back. So now that we've learned about buttons and scripting, can you tell us about our physics-based interactivity? Perfect timing. I can teleport to our physics learning station from up here. Physics is a language understood by everyone because it mimics the real world. Physics is used to enhance interactions and enrich environments for collaboration and play. It's an easy way to make your world feel more alive and immersive as you can manipulate physical properties to tell stories. You can use physics to add basic interactivity to a scene, such as making a rigid body grabbable and releasable, setting up a physics animation reaction to a trigger, and creating a containment field for rigid bodies. All of this will be covered in the tutorial, but for now, I'd love to show you how to make a rigid body grabbable and releasable with our physics tools. First, we use the Mesh Interactable Object Script to make an object, you guessed it, interactable. There's a lot of different settings you can customize, including scaling and transforms, but we'll stick to the basics for now and make this turbine manipulable so we can directly grab and release in the space. It's as easy as checking the box. Now, I can't wait to play around with these turbines in Mesh. Brent, take it away. Let's publish our environment. All right. So I've already logged in and created my template here. So I can just click Build and Publish, and my environment loads into Mesh. Now you can see our avatars in Mesh interacting with the wind turbines. This project will be available to you if you just want to download it, publish it to Mesh, and check it out with your coworkers. But we recommend completing it as we've designed this sample with developers and creators in mind to help you self-enable as best as possible. So Mega, let's recap what we covered today. Well, first, we told you about Mesh and all the great experiences you can build to better connect with people, like social gatherings, interactive storytelling, all hands meetings, and more. You can take people to places they wouldn't normally go and control things like time and space to set up experiences that people wouldn't normally have. And next, we showed you how using our combination of mesh capabilities enables you to create bespoke experiences that can bring you closer to your coworkers, whether they be down the hall or across the world or on top of a wind turbine. Speaking of, finally, we gave you a tour of our Mesh 101 tutorial, where you understood that we will give you not only tools, but also guidance on how to create compelling immersive experiences for Mesh. What I'm really excited about is how all these pieces come together to provide a truly unique set of tools you can trust. We have an avatar system that works in both Teams and Mesh. If you haven't already, go learn about avatars for Teams and immersive spaces for Teams. We have a physics interactivity system you can use to create fun real-world activities you can enjoy with others. We have a cloud scripting system that enables companies to securely connect to their business logic and do things like dynamically load data from SharePoint and much, much more.
And all of this is done securely on a company's own Microsoft tenant. It really is something else. We really appreciate you spending your time with us, learning more about how you can craft amazing experiences with Microsoft Mesh. And if you're interested in our private preview, you can register at aka.ms forward slash join mesh tap. You can go to mesh.com to learn more about Microsoft Mesh, Avatar for Teams, and Immersive Spaces for Teams. We can't wait to see what you'll build. <laughs> Good one.